you need to make some ladies jigsaw. and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages happy easter everybody it's easter weekend and uh we're here again i know you missed us so we're back and ed brought his pencil and he needs something to write on man so anyways uh we're gonna start with uh you know big things Bradley just came from a uh, baseball tournament, rushed here, trying to get home, get stuff done, get situated, have a day to relax tomorrow. Uh, oh, yeah. Before we get going with stuff, uh, we got membership stuff. We have – we added some new stuff to the store. Not only do we have T-shirts, but we have accessories, backpacks. People have been asking for baseball hats. we got baseball hats. Uh you can get it all through the YouTube link in the community section. Uh, we'll try to get some stuff to pop up on the podcast. Get this stuff going. Get this stuff rolling. Big stuff. Eduardo, oh. you know what time it is. What time is it, Ed? Time it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> the dream always rises to the top. How about that? All right? If you so, say so. Hey. Hey. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Why are you today? Come on, you're, you're, supposed to be, you're supposed to be the comedy relief on this show. Hey, hey, you be nice. I know that goes against your religion, but come on. It is Easter. Right. It, it's it's email brought to you by Goonguard.com. Goonguard.com. Check us out. Use the promo code, promo code 1973. They heat up in 10 seconds. You can wear them around, talk. You can have them logoed and all that other good stuff. Check them out, goonguard.com. This one, the email comes from JJ from Dartmouth. So Dar JJ brings up the con. He, I'm not reading it verbatim because I don't have my notes because I'm still on the road. Anyway, so JJ says, you guys talked about being comic guys. And he goes, what's your favorite superhero movie? Oh. So I'm going to talk to you guys first. Oh, that's a tough one. That, that, is, that is tough. I mean, uh, you you can hit that from so many different angles. Is this is this like when we got the what is the greatest sports uh, movie of all time? So were you talking our personal favorite or what we think the greatest one is of all time? So I I believe the email is from somebody local to our area. Ed, is that correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so it's good to hear people that are local supporting the podcast send stuff in. Uh, I, when I pulled this email, I thought, geez, this is kind of uh, different. We've, we've never really dove into a lot of movie talk, and we haven't really dove into, I think the only time we brought it up was uh, Brad had mentioned it one time when he first came on that about uh, the comic book stuff. So uh, the, my favorite comic book movie, superhero related of all time. Uh, I'm going to, I've been thinking about this one for a while, and I, cannot give you a definitive answer i think i'm gonna go for low-hanging fruit and go the avengers endgame uh the last one where they tied everything in uh i thought it was the most epic lord of the ring style tie-in movie for everything you got appearances from everybody in that one i know it's it's tough i thought spider-man uh the third one uh no way home uh, the last one that was really good, uh, where they had the multiverse Spider Man show up. Um, very, very tough. I haven't heard it yet, I haven't watched it yet. La, 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 la. <laughs> very good, though, Tom. You got to watch it. Uh, I thought Batman Begins was really good. The first one with Christian Bale, I thought that was really good. Uh, I, I, I would have to say Endgame, the very, the very last one of the Avengers uh, movies. That's probably the pick. Um, I could rattle on about this forever, but uh, the 1966 Batman movie, not not my favorite, but I always thought that one was near and dear to a kid's heart, but who wants to take it? Brad? Oh, I've been queuing this up, fellas. <laughs> I have my own Infinity Gauntlet. It lights up. I have my own. This one is near and dear to my heart. Because I got it at the Disney store before they went out of business. Howard the Duck. Oh, Howard the Duck. All you nerds oh, out there. Yeah. You were alive for that? Howard the Duck is. Um, Howard the Duck was one of the very first comic book movies, by the way. 
that was ever made way back in the day. Yeah, were you even alive. alive when they made that? <laughs> yes, I was. I was a, I was a young, <laughs> young boy. Leah Thompson was in that. Yeah, um, super over the top eighties, you know, weird movie, but incredible. I love the Infinity War movies. They were not comic book accurate, but there were a lot of comic book similarities. It, it, so it was done very, very well. It was also the peak of the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. Of course, everything's been downhill since. Um, I love the Loki series, season one of Loki. Absolute banger of a TV show, especially with the little Easter eggs there throughout the whole episode. Um, if y'all are very savvy with your comic book knowledge, the very last episode featured a Thanos helicopter, which I have the Hot Wheels version of. Thank you very much. Um, loved it. If I, uh, um, I, I think to date the Spider-Man movies have been done very well. I enjoy all of them. They're they're incredibly uh, you know uh, well done. Um, but if I had to pick like an all-time favorite, like right now out that that, that is out, and and if I I love the Blade trilogy. Let's be honest, that shit was fucking amazing with <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Um, but the What If TV series on Disney Plus, it's not for the Marvel casuals if you're a casual fan that's in it for the wokeness and the agenda and the female he-man hating stuff bullshit you're not gonna like what if uh the what if series takes you on a roller coaster ride it is incredible they tie all the episodes together and it's it's not that usual uh uh you know campy marvel stuff it, it, it's really well done if you haven't watched what if um go watch it the Marvel Zombies episode is epic, um, and they they do a really good job of tying it all together. So that's my favorite, Thomas. Kick it to you. Well, I'll be different because I actually I think my favorite is the Avengers: Infinity War and the uh, I'll even say Endgame because it was kind of yep. two parter. But uh, I'll be different. I'm going to go with the 2011 Captain America, the first Avenger, because I like how they gave his origin story. And I wasn't really huge into comic books, so I really didn't know a lot about the character, but I I, I really like that one. And? Mm. I'm going to go with two, actually, because, I mean, I just can't, okay. you know, okay. I can't just have one. I'm going to have to go with, I, I have to say, probably the original Wolverine, I have to say I really dig that one quite a bit. Thought that was really, really good. And I really have to say, it's not, I have to say, because it's probably more of an origin story than anything else, but I really enjoyed Joker. Oh, I thought, okay. I, I really thought that that was just so well done, so well written. Just, I mean, the whole time, just sitting there watching it. And it was just like, I watched it on Halloween and it was, you know, years ago. And I was like, man, they just did a really, really good job on it. So that those are my those are my two right there, uh, you know. Because I just like the, I mean, I love Wolverine character, you know, and I think Hugh Jackman did a really good job in, in that movie, and you know, all through the trilogy, you know. Uh, before we move on from this, I I know that my buddy Brad will love this question, and I hope that they're wrong with doing this, and I hope that they don't screw this up. So, I love the Fantastic Four. I always thought that was one of the comedy driven superhero groups they're the very first superhero group in marvel um they're gonna try it again i heard that one of my favorite characters in the marvel universe is gonna be a female character the silver surfer which they never ever had a female silver surfer in any of the multiverses i think they're gonna ruin it if they do that it is going to be backlash. Uh, Bradford, can't weigh in while I grab something. Man, look, I also forgot to mention the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy. Guardians 1 was expected yep. to fail. They kind of quietly, slowly released it. Turned out to be a mega hit. It was the Star Wars movie we never got. The second one was kind of a dud. The third one was absolutely incredible. If you haven't seen the Guardians movie, all three of those standalone films, whether you like Marvel movies or not, those three movies are bangers. The Fantastic Four is interesting because different studios have owned the rights to it over the years, dating all the way back to like the 80s or some shit. And they were kind of in the same boat as Captain America and whatnot. And just to keep the rights to the movie, the studio just put out some hot garbage. 
And that's just it, it that's the, just the way it's been with Fantastic Four. It's never got a fair shot. And I was hoping with Disney they would give this movie a fair break. They had Reed Richards with the dude from the office in the last Doctor Strange movie. And then they went and recast him as somebody else. Yep. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And everybody went nuts. Everybody's pissed off about it. And now I haven't heard that Silver Surfer thing, Andy, but that, I'm not happy about that. Yep. Um, yep. I don't see how, any angle where they make that work. Yep. And, and that kind of, it makes sense because Marvel is in the process of making every major superhero a woman. Every major superhero. Thor made a woman. Um, yep. Uh, the which, list, which, I, got the I, I gotta defend Iron that. Man, they made a woman. They, they're making them all women. Okay, so uh, let me defend the Jane Foster thing being the being Thor because if you are a fan of comic books, like my buddy Thomas knows that I am since we were kids. Yep. I am. What if number ten that I own that I bought off the shelf when I was a kid? When what if was a throwaway comic? I was a huge what if fan as a kid. Uh, still have all my stuff holding on to it. Um, but the Jane Foster becoming Thor and is in a actual what if original run of comics. So that yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give them I'll give them a little bit of, of creative freedom on that one. But I grabbed two things off the wall while we're talking about comics, just to show my friend Brad. Here's my Avengers number one. Holy right crap. Here, off the wall. Holy crap. And I've had this for quite a long time when it wasn't worth nothing. And just because of argument's sake, just to show Brad, here is my, where is it? My X-Men 94. First appearance of the new team with Wolverine and everything like that. So I just want to grab them off the wall and show off for a minute. Showing that I got some good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, there's next. Did you did you have those next to the Elvis tape back in the day? <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is stuff for uh, the the man cave room for uh, the kids to inherit. Uh, you know, I am an old school old school comic book collector. Before anybody bagged and bored stuff, where I had a pile in my room like this, mm. and I would just read them for reference and keep keep the mind shop on different stories and if somebody was debating something you'd run home and grab an issue and be like that's bs look there it is and uh yeah so i could talk comics for a while we could i could do a really deep dive so I, i'm glad i grabbed this email i'm glad somebody wrote in we could talk about something a little different than than we haven't had a chance to so yep very uh very cool email thanks for writing thanks that the email jj Yep, thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Um, hopefully, we'll, uh, too. yeah, maybe we can talk more about that stuff as maybe some of the the movies or or stuff comes out. I'd, I'd love to talk more about that stuff too. So, oh, absolutely. Let uh, where do we leave off with the wrestling talk? Going into one week away, big uh, big thing happened this week. Um, it kind of went. A little bit blown up on social media, if you'll say the rock, the uh, the rock, the rock, the rock. dropping in, and yeah, the rock dropping an f bomb on uh TV, uh, live TV, right? Uh, so my big thing goes to show you how you can draw people in to a big angle when you get the blade out and do do a little bit of slicing and dicing just for just for uh, storytelling. Uh, I don't know if Ed had a chance to see Cody busted open by The Rock. I did uh, not. Very, very well worth watching the end of Raw. And I'm hoping that they're setting the groundwork towards not everything, but the big angles when they're going on Netflix next month. If you have Netflix, is it next month or next year? When are they going uh, on? To? I'm not even sure. To be yeah. honest. I know there's a couple month period where they're actually – they they're gonna probably reach a deal with the uh, USA Network to um to air it the next for like a couple weeks extra because they're not going. I think it's next year. I think it's like September or October is when they're going. And there's like a two week or three week period where they're like, I won't say free agent, but they don't have any uh, TV network right now. But I think mm -hmm. they said they're probably reaching a deal with USA. Okay, um, so let's get back to the angle. We got the blood thoughts, Thomas. I loved it, and I, 
one thing I got to say is I hope, I mean, it seems like they're going away, like as we talked last week, going away from the PG-13 and or the PG and going more PG-13 and have, but I just hope they don't have too much blood where you have guys in the first match bleed in. And I mean, just have, uh, make it mean something. Don't, don't have anyone bleed because then it takes away from angles later on in the, in the show or so I, I really loved it. And I like how the rock continued it where he, like they posted stuff on, on their Twitter accounts where after the show, where he kept whipping them with the uh, belt. And I, I really like that. I like, and I like how they've changed everything. You could see how the UFC has the, the group from the UFC has taken over because they've changed their ang- their camera angles. They're doing the old UFC thing where they're showing the people showing up to the arenas. Like UFC was famous for that, where they, they wouldn't show everyone, but they show like the main eventers arriving at the arena. And that's what the WWE is starting to do now. So I, I kind of like some of the new stuff they're doing. So, uh, and just, I mean, just- I love it. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but I, I'm this. But it, the thing about it is, is that it's touched on Tom's point. You brought it up too, Brad. I know you're going to jump in here too. This all goes to back to what we've all been talking about. Use it for good storytelling. The ending of, of, of the build for pay per view. Just Tom, exactly what you just said. It, it doesn't need to be shown every single match because it loses something, and that's really wonderful to see. Um, so I'm definitely going to take a, take a gander at it and take a look at it. I'm just happy that they're using it the correct way, and that makes me happy because that makes great storytelling. Uh, before Brad weighs in, I, I just want to give a, a – I'm going to throw this out there, and if it happens, it'll, it'll, it'll warm the wrestling fans hot, especially me, old-school wrestling fan, and especially Big Dusty fan. Everybody's going to tell you they're a Big Dusty fan, but I'm going to tell you I was a Big Dusty fan. How cool would it be when you see like the montage of people winning the WWF title? You never see anybody all NWA style with the bloody face. How cool would it be if Cody ends up finishing the story and he's all busted open and he's holding that belt for that picture that's going to stay in the WWE universe for years to come? There has not been a guy that I can remember other than when Flair won and he said that time during this is the greatest day of my life and the whole thing. (laughs) There hasn't been a guy all gigged up that stands there with the belt and with the, you know, finishing the story, the period at the end of the sentence, no pun intended. And, uh, you know, just (laughs) for all the, you know, for all the years to come. So Bradford, what are your thoughts? That was the most electrifying episode of Monday Night Raw I have seen in years. That felt like old school attitude era wrestling. Like the PG era is dead. They made jokes about it on that episode. They made PG jokes. They, you know, they, they uh, Cody Rhodes made a comment about The Rock and Roman Reigns wanking off the parking lot. Like, and they've been sneaking blood in for the last couple of months since the new year. They've been peppering it in there. The dialogue since The Rock came back is getting more and more aggressive. You know, and The Rock came back and said, wrestling needed me. I saved y'all. We all got, like, butt hurt. Like, we didn't need you to save us because WrestleMania was supposed to already be set. But, you know, The Rock legitimately has the star power. And I wouldn't be surprised that every time they cuss or they show blood, USA finds them or whoever finds them, that The Rock's just paying that shit out of pocket. Like, wrestling did need The Rock. He has the power to break them out of the shell and take it to the next level. And, I, I like, I was, I was speechless at the end of that episode. Like it was legit the best episode of Monday Night Raw I've seen in a long time. It so was if, incredible. If you are Endeavor and you do own both entities, the UFC and the WWE, and, like, you go back to that presentation of, yes, we know it's a work, but present it like a sport. Present it like yeah. two guys that have a conflict, two guys that are trying to get somewhere to win a title that whatever is your main goal, it should be they're all in it to win that championship. That should be the starting point for your storytelling. And they're all trying to – either you're trying to cut somebody's throat to get there or you're trying to do things the right way. And there's your, there's your heroes and there's your villains. And then you go from there. And it's yep. the quest – 
of who's climbing the ladder and how they're doing it to get there. You don't have to make it like a soap opera, but you do make it like a soap opera with good with the storytelling and take you on that ride. Okay, somebody might like Austin Theory. Other people might not like him. You might like Randy Orton. Other people might. So you have your guy, just like when you watch UFC, you have your guy or you watch pro sports, you have your team. It's the same thing. And I don't think they can grasp how easy it is to write that kind of story. Not every guy is going to be, you know, Roman Reigns. But the guys that are, you know, not every team in the league is is epic. There are teams that are known for being stiff. So that's it should just write itself. But call me crazy, but it, is it that easy, or am I, you know, writing some big <laughs> diatribe that nobody else can understand? Go ahead, Brad. There's a lot of chatter going on right now that there is an ex WWE superstar rumored to show up at Mania to help Cody Rhodes finish his story. I know who it is. Yeah, me too. <laughs> who is it? Nope. It, it's going to be the brother. That's what a lot of folks are leaning towards. And if Tony Khan is as savvy of a businessman as he is, contract or not, he'll allow him one night at WrestleMania. Because if Dustin Rhodes shows up at Mania, bro, that is epic free advertising for AEW. I know, but it would but be it, incredible. Is it? It's almost better when you keep the stuff a secret. If you can yeah. keep that a secret, just like you keep the MJF stuff a secret, it's so much better because the pop Ooh, is so much better. It. It, just yeah. have them in the crowd, not the whole night. That way people are pointing, there he is, there he is. That last match, you kind of let him kind of bleed out with a hoodie on or whatever and just watch. And then when he comes to help, the mother could be there, Cody's mother, Cody's sister. She's involved. They they just dropped that uh, turnbuckle uh, wrestling came back, the one that Dusty started in Florida. Yep. And she's the commissioner of it because the Rhodes family owns it. Now the Nightmare Factory is there. It's it's their um, school that feeds that talent there. So mm -hmm. there, there could be a lot of things factored in. And this WrestleMania could be worth watching. I heard Stone Cold's coming back. I heard Hulk Hogan's heard coming back. So uh, why wouldn't you want to watch it? If you have Peacock, throw it on. I mean, come on now. That nope. You're going to watch one wrestling thing a year. That's the one you watch. It, just like if you're going to watch one football game a year, what do you watch? The Super Bowl, right? No way. The Pro Bowl. <laughs> Pro Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Week one of preseason, Andy. That's yeah. what we watch. Yeah, come on. Come on now. You guys you can't take the guys seriously. <laughs> Here I am trying to run a legit business and you guys are bringing me down. <laughs> Let's be now. The UFL's guys. back. That's what we're watching. <laughs> so uh any more stuff you want to touch on about Mania before, or do you just want to wait and watch and see what happens? Or do you want to add any insights to it? And well, I know you're all over watching it next week. I have a freaking wedding to go to on the six, so I'm kind of irritated about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, you have to you'll have to watch it on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> no spoiler alerts. <laughs> no spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> no spoilers. Uh so Ed, you want to touch on anything on WrestleMania before we before we bounce? No, I'm good. Okay. Sounds good. So speaking of wrestling, uh last week we forgot to watch uh put our input in on on episode uh Terry Gordy on Dark Side of the Ring and Bruce Beefcake. So uh did everybody Really get caught up on that? Yep. All right. So let's start with the Terry Gordy. Yes, boss. Uh, <laughs> what do you think of the way they portrayed the Terry Gordy story, Thomas, mm -hmm. being a big Freebirds fan? Oof. Boy, he was, I feel bad for him because he was on some pretty heavy shit, I guess, from what I'm watching that. But I mean, there were some stories that were crazy. I mean, the story with how Dr. Death, uh, had to slap him hard enough to wake him up when he had passed out uh, because he was afraid he'd swallow his tongue. I mean, that's mm. that, that's some crazy stuff right there. And then there was stuff I, I had forgotten about. I forgot that he was the executioner for like two weeks or whatever it was in the WWE. And it was sad that, uh, I mean, it was interesting that The Undertaker was the one that actually went and told Vince, you know, maybe this is... Don't do him like this. I mean, he, he had too good of a career to go have, for him to go out like this. And he was in such bad shape at that point. And then the sad thing was when he passed away. I mean, he'd like, what was it like the day before he passed away? He had called his son and asked him to uh, 
be his tag team partner. And I forgot what it was, if his son didn't answer the phone or he just, he said no. And then the next day his dad had passed away. So it was, it was a very sad thing because you can see he had a lot of problems, but um, I was always a Freebird fan. I think they should have gotten a little bit more into the Freebird stuff, to be honest with you, but it was uh, it was a good one. I really like this one. They've really kind of knocked it out of the park the last couple of weeks. Ed, what thoughts on the uh, Terry Gordy? Well, first and foremost, it was sad that he went so early. First and foremost, and I said, and part of it, I'm going to agree with Tom. It, they, I think that they would, they really do a big disservice about not layering in more of the stories on how big the Freebirds were. Because I remember watching the Freebirds come in and watching, uh, what was it World Class Championship Wrestling from Texas with the red in, red ring apron and feuding with the Von Erichs. I mean, that was huge. I mean, that was like. Man, and, and it it just it felt real. Even and even at, at Andy, you and I talked about this back in the seventh grade. Man, like, we knew this that, that this stuff was fake. But man, it like just the way that they story told it was just so much better. And like these guys were kind of like characters that were just totally like outrageous, but so believable. You know, for that because we all except for Brad, we all grew up in the seventies. You know, we're all seventies kids except for Brad because <laughs> he's a young one at the table. You know, yeah, I'm the young one. Yeah, well, that, I know. So, but I thought it was good, though. I mean, it was sad that he passed away so early, you know. Uh, Brad, want to weigh in on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I was really looking forward to, like, getting more, like Ed said, like, the layers of, of the Freebirds, because, like, I, I didn't grow up in that era, so I was looking forward to, like, getting more of that and learning, like, that that history of it. Um, but I also feel like with Dark Side of the Ring, they could probably make one episode and just, you know, every five minutes change to the wrestler that had injuries, drug addiction, painkiller addiction, and died an early death. You know, it's that's, sad, man. But that, that's that, it, the that's hard, it. yeah, like the hard truth is a large majority of this career field suffers from those afflictions. Yeah, you know? I, I think that it's so much back then was so accessible because those guys were so, uh, especially in the territory times, I think they were so beloved in different, like you watch a lot of shoot interviews, like when the internet first broke, the big thing for guys like myself that were wrestling historians and purists, we wanted to hear all the stories that you never got to hear when it was kayfabe. So when the curtain opened up and they were recording these shoot interviews with certain guys, I was all into listening to these stories about stuff that you never heard of about before how these guys when they were in a territory they would get pulled over by cops all the time because they're racing from one town to another and the cops would see the same guys on the same nights mm -hmm. at the same spots flying by and they were like well that's they, they're not pulling over Ivan Koloff they, they know who he is they know where he's going he's going to the next town so they wouldn't even pull him over because they had many celebrity status but the things that were very accessible to them were the potty side of it and the alcohol. And it's easy w to fall into those traps because it was like a fraternity. If you didn't go out, you were, you weren't part of the group. And in order to make money back then you had to be part of, you know, the crew and things like that. It wasn't, you know, about going back to your room and doing the right thing and, and ordering room service and sitting there and keeping to yourself. No, you had to be out there and politics. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Being but a that's not what the 80s was about anyway. Yeah, I mean, well, think about Studio 54. I mean, think about it. Studio 54, they had a moon with a gigantic cocaine spoon that came down with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean. That's what the 80s was, man. Yeah, Watch Wolf of Wall Street. It's the same thing. Right, right. So, I mean, I, I think a lot of those guys were, were younger guys with, uh, you know, no financial education on what to do with their money and they went out and spent it and if they made 50 bucks they spent 75 bucks so yeah it's just uh crazy so uh let's move on from Terry Gordy and talk about Brutus the Baba Beefcake Hulk Hogan's little brother uh Dizzy Bolle <laughs> uh Thomas thoughts on uh Dizzy Boulder I thought it was pretty good, but I mean, the thing that I was looking forward to, and it, I mean, it's kind of gross. It's like, but to see you, I had always heard about the accident, the parasailing accident, but to have the doctor on there to show the x-rays, man, he's lucky to be alive. 
And the uh, the story that they told was Sherry Martell walking into the room and <laughs> screaming because she didn't expect to see what she saw. Had me. I mean, it was. It's. I hate to say it, but I was laughing as I was watching it because I can just picture her with that like maniacal like scream that she uses when she was with the uh, Macho Man. I mean, it's just. But I mean, it was interesting, and I liked how they added a few different people. Uh, the older wrestlers, like they had Missy Hyatt on there this week, and. Uh, even though I, not a big fan, but they had Greg Valentine on there, Mr. Personality on there. And, uh, but I like having different perspectives and not having the same guys on there every week. Yeah. The thing that, not the, before I, I get to uh, Bradford and Edwin, the uh, thing I thought was funny on there was when they, I, I don't know if you caught it. They said that, <laughs> I think it was Missy Hyatt that said it, that Bruce Beefcake was only around because he was the guy that carried Hulk Hogan's gimmicks. Rugs. It, yep. it, so it, Hogan would never get busted with it. it would always be him if something happened. Uh, so I th I thought that was pretty coy how they left it in. And if you blink, you missed it. But uh, he was, but according to Hogan, he didn't do any drugs whatsoever. So uh, Brad Ned, weigh in on the Baba. I, I really liked the episode a lot. I, I really did. I thought it was great. Um, you know, just to hear some of the stories um, from back in the day, you know, Tom, I, you know, you don't like Greg the Hammer Valentine, man. I mean, he really was great in the ring. I mean, he was great. Tell a story. Only guy I have on a belt that could be worth some money. I have a championship belt that I have guys sign and he signed it upside down. <laughs> and then to top it off, I give him the money and he says, oh, sorry, I don't have any change. And doesn't give me give me any change back for what it cost me to get get him to do it. Oh man, <laughs> all, all the hate, man, all the hate. But I, I, you know, I totally, I totally have forgotten about the accident. I, and um, to hear how vicious of an accident that it was, I, I mean, I, I don't remember any part of that. But man, that, I mean, to hear what they did, like peeling his skull back and fixing his eyes and everything like that. I mean, that was, man, that was a pretty big deal. Bradford. Yeah, that accident was gross. Like, I, I don't even want to think about it. Um, But does this make me weird that, like, Brutus the Barber Beefcake was one of my favorites when no. I was a kid? No. Like, no. no like when, you, I, when, you were, when you were a kid, you was he was the booty man. <laughs> like, I, like, I have the original, like, Gen 1 WWF action figures of Brutus. I have a couple of, two of Hulk Hogan, and then one Ultimate Warrior. Like, Brutus was, like, my guy um and i and like it is hard for me watching these dark side of the rings and seeing these like childhood heroes just discombobulated man like they they do not look well and even when they showed uh greg the hammer valentine i was like oh shit <laughs> uh time did not do you guys any favors man oh um, most of these guys do not age well <laughs> no <laughs> no that's what happens uh, yeah, when it, you get your face rubbed in a canvas for your almost your whole adult life. Yeah. Well, man, I want to make a friendly suggestion. Maybe some water instead of uh, uh, pills and alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, stay uh, high, high stay hydrated, pain, my friends. Yeah. You yeah, can count the oil on that face. Yeah. Jeez Louise. I mean, get you a, know. Get a good night of sleep. No more cocaine benders. Yeah. It's uh, like some of these guys got their face put out with an axe when it was lit on fire. Yeah. 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 Great episode, though. I'm glad <laughs> they got back on track. The uh, the funny thing for us local uh, Massachusetts guys was, did you catch the story about how he met his wife? Yes. She, she snuck backstage at the Boston Garden in like 1988. Didn't now they didn't say how old she was at that time. <laughs> then when they reconnected, she was living in Quincy and he was living in Massachusetts. So what time? Of, when was this that he lived in Massachusetts? Nobody knew that. No, then, no, he, he used to walk around the North End back in the back in the nineties. Oh, okay. what about the, the story where he worked for the Mass Transit yeah, and the, right. the the powder fell out that uh, <laughs> Greg Valentine made me laugh when he said there was cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's great to look at it from a like a, a voyeuristic standpoint where you're a wrestling fan and you you're getting all these stories, but. Um, Man, it, some of them, it's like, it's tough to watch. I The one that I'm really waiting for is like the Sherry one. The uh, Holly Race one should be really good. That's uh, next Tuck, week. Oh, 
talk about what a what a tough son of a bitch that's, that guy that's gonna is. grow some hair on your chest just watching it <laughs> yeah 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 according to a lot of those shoot interviews when they say talk about toughest guys all time like if they guys got in legit fights to you know defend the like hey you're not a tough you're a wrestler it's all phony he was in the top five uh he's the guy who used to pop eyeballs out on a oh yeah the old fish hook get behind yeah. the eye and pop it out for a few minutes yeah. Um, how about when uh, they were talking about when Hogan was walking Beefcake down the hallway and his eyeball popped out in on the uh, dark side? Yep. Uh, so yeah. Um, so stay tuned. We'll we'll talk about that some more. We forgot last week. I I hate these guys when they don't keep me on track with some of the stuff. But uh, speaking of being on track, it's time to talk some Tom shitty picks. Thomas. All righty. You are on deck. Tom's Shitty Picks is brought to you by Brock Street Brewing Company, located at 244 Brockton Street South in Whippy, Ontario. The brewery is home to a banquet hall, an on-site restaurant, and a members-only lounge. Everything they brew is done in-house, including their sours, uh, lagers, and their vodka soda. They have something for everyone, so if you're in Whippy, go check them out and tell them the 1973 podcast sent you. All right, my, my Shitty Picks for last week, I did my final four picks, and actually... I've got two out of four left, but it's the two I picked in the championship game. So hopefully uh, it's not too bad. If if UConn wins it, I'll take it. I'll, I'd, I'd say that's a pretty good pick. But my pick this week, I'm going to go with baseball. i seen that baseball started. And I am going to go with uh, kind of a gimme. I mean, it's early in the year. But I'm going to go with uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. He's got five games this week coming up, uh, three against the White Sox in Chicago. And then he's got – only a two game series against Arizona and he's not facing either of Arizona's like top pitchers. So I think he's going to have a big, uh, big week this week. So let's stay with the baseball talk thoughts on uh, this opening day this past week, just real quick thoughts on uh, where the baseball season stands before the rest of the 389 games that they got to play this season. Brad, <laughs> it's not that many games. It's a lot of games, but it's not 389. Oh, the look, I'm happy. The Rangers debuted their banner. I got my gold emblazoned World Series stitched up hat. It's got gold on the inside. I got my gold T-shirt in the closet somewhere. We just got a matching hat. I am beyond excited. I don't know if we're going to repeat. We lost Jordan Montgomery to the D-backs, but the Braves look incredible. The Rangers are looking damn good right now. The Dodgers look like they're the team to beat. Um, baseball's back. I mean, what can I say, man? I'm, I'm, I hate basketball. Sorry, <laughs> Scotty, too hotty. You know, I know you sponsor us, buddy. Not a fan of the Final Four. I it's just, I just don't get into it. I'm sorry. Barely watched the NBA. Baseball's back. I, I'm excited. Let fucking go. <laughs> Texas Rangers, baby. <laughs> Ed, want to kind of add, add to that? Well, I will say that uh, you know, it's baseball season. I mean, and it is a long season. It and it. I don't know for anybody that is a baseball fan, man. The first, the first half of the year before the All Star break, man, it is like watching, watching paint dry. It is pretty boring, you know. Now, I mean, and I certainly after the All Star break, I certainly turn it on and uh, you know, pay a little bit more attention. But man, to sit down and watch a nine inning game, that's tough. So what you know, you're saying you know, is you don't get involved until after the Stanley Cup is done. Uh yeah. A funny story how I, how how you said it and how I didn't say it. Right. But yeah. Yeah. Until the cup is done, we don't That's watch right. any of that shit. I'm telling That's you. Right. And some of us don't exactly. watch any of that shit. Brother, come on now. <laughs> so speaking of baseball, it's time to hold on. First... I got a couple of things I want to add, <laughs> if you don't mind. Back me up, Tom. Back me up. Well, just a couple of stories from the first few games of the season. Mookie Betts is absolutely on fire. He's batting 571. He's already got three home runs. Why can't the Red Sox get players like that? Uh, oh. <laughs> my second thing is future Hall of Famer, wink, wink, quote, quote, Tyler O'Neill for the Red Sox set a major league record hitting his fifth home, his home run. He's, he's homered now in five straight opening games. So he set he broke the major league record that was held by Gary Carter, uh, Yogi Berra, and Todd Hunley. And the Sad Sack A's, they only had 13,522 fans for their opener. 
And uh, that was after the tickets were going as low as $6. And they still could only draw 6,000. It was so quiet in the game, in the uh, crowd, that they started playing EDM music to try to drown out and make a little noise. It, it's just pretty pathetic. And they are, are moving they still the They never sold, right? No, that's, yeah, they, they're still not definitively going. They, they still haven't uh, 100%. I mean, they're building – that the stadium's actually being built in Vegas, but there's a big holdup somewhere. Hey, listen, oh, I'll tell you, from going last year to see the Knights, if they end up moving there, they will – uh, have really good crowds because a lot of these uh, casinos comp tickets to these games mm. and at least they'll have tourists that come in and out and in and out and maybe somebody's never ever been to a baseball game and that's a great opportunity for somebody mm. to go and and uh, you know it just opens more doors like that I think Vegas is a great place for sports places to now with sports betting it's it's all wide open and you see what it did for the Knights they uh, you know They've been nothing but, you know, pretty much the bee's knees, as the kids say, for the league since they went there. So it's a good move if they move them. Uh, so baseball talk, tinfoil hat. We're going to tie that in. It's time for Bradford's tinfoil hat segment. Take it. Great it segue about betting in Las Vegas, by the way, because I want to talk about betting baseball and Shohei Otani. Let's look at the facts, people. Let's look at the facts. Hired a childhood friend to be his interpreter. All right. Large bets and to the tune of five hundred thousand to a million dollars, secretly withdrawn from his account, where he did not look. If somebody withdraws fifty cents from my account, I notice. He, you telling me Otani didn't notice five hundred thousand dollar million dollar withdrawals uh, from his. From his bank account. It's because it wasn't in the end. Yeah. That's placed in his hometown, right? Super suspicious. Told everybody, you know, his baseball's golden boy. Act like he didn't know English. Turns out he can't speak English. Uh, claims he didn't watch any other sports. And now stuff is popping up of him being at the Final Four from 2021. Looking nervous like he just put a bet on a parlay. It was about to bust. Uh <laughs> An interview of him, I think, at the Vegas Golden Knights, watching hockey. Um, all this, all this weird stuff coming up, and so the internet sleuths went in and found two games where these large money bets were placed, where Otani was pitching. He gave up five or six runs in each game, and then went zero for three hitting. Very uncharacteristic for one of the best players in baseball. And turns out by giving up five or six runs and going over, he wound up covering the spread and hit on those parlays. Imagine that. So there, people are putting all these pieces together. So the conspiracy for me is I think Otani is 100% guilty, but he's the baby face of baseball. So they're going to cover this shit up because if they, if they have to give in and be like, hey, Otani, you're guilty as shit, but we're going to let you play baseball then they got to let my boy Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. And that's never going to fucking happen. So they're just going to sweep this shit under the rug. They're going to cover it up, and they're going to bury it like they always do. And Pete Rose will never make it to the Hall of Fame. This ain't even about Otani at this point. This is about baseball taking an L and then having to let Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. Thomas, you can't add to that? I'm wearing a tinfoil hat, but I actually agree with Brad this time. He MLB... That's their uh, that's their international cash cow. They're, they're going to try any way possible to keep his name out of it, and I don't expect this investigation to go long because they've already made up their mind. Ed? Well, first and foremost, it talks about the integrity of the game now, doesn't it? I mean, it, it shows that the games can be fixed. And the thing about it is it's like, look at all these guys getting busted for gambling lately. And so the thing about it is just that, look, these guys have always been putting money on a game anyway. I mean, if you ever listen to, like, Michael Jordan stories about playing golf, dude, these guys these guys have big money, and they and it's a rush for them. So, you know, um, I, it's sad to see the integrity of the game going down, especially in baseball. Uh, I agree with Brad. Brad, P. Rose should be in the Hall of Fame regardless anyway. And the thing is, is like because they could, they could never guarantee that he bet on the Reds or any game, any teams that he was playing against or coaching against. 
I said the thing about it is, is because Pete Rose wouldn't give in and he wouldn't give what Bob Giamatti what he wanted. So that's wrong. So the thing about it is, is that, you know, all, there's all these facts coming out, but don't you feel kind of funny, kind of funny how this has kind of gone to the back, back burner since we are in tinfoil hat kind of mode, you know, all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden this warrant gets served to P Diddy now by the feds, which is a good thing. And then, Oh yeah, that's right. Monday morning. Um, let's see. The Ukrainian captain that smashed the boat into a into a bridge, huh? And how this Otani thing is kind of taking a back seat to that. I mean, that's true tinfoil hat stuff, now, isn't it, guys? Oh, it's, it's, we yeah, could... the story's been buried. No major networks carrying the Otani story. The only tidbits I see anymore is on these like far out, you know, Instagram sports pages now. Like they're still running it, but it, it's been buried. It's Ooh. over with. Yeah. So, so speaking of that, before we uh, move away from this little tidbit of the, the P. Diddy thing is kind of crazy how uh, he's still on the run, Bradford. He's still on the run. And uh, what kills me about when people overlook certain things that are right in front of you is you look back at all this stuff and you don't say to yourself, how did I catch that? No, it was right there. It's just everybody that said, look at that was going, mm-hmm. what are you stupid? He's famous. He can't be doing that stuff that I, I, so nope. but speaking of <laughs> speaking of conspiracy theories go ahead tom i just one more thing with the with the gambling thing there's a uh investigation now in the nba there's a uh player uh his last name is porter his brother is bo porter for the denver nuggets he this guy porter plays for the toronto raptors he's being investigated for gambling and putting prop bets on himself and uh so he's more than likely going to get suspended. So it's still still in the investigative uh, uh, stages, but it doesn't look good for him. Ooh. Speaking of not looking good, let's talk about this week's Phantom video. You guys see that this week? <laughs> oh, I'm, I am going to, before we get into that, real quick, I'm going to throw it in right, here, right around here. Do not arouse the wrath of the great and powerful Oz. I said, come back tomorrow. If you are really great and powerful, you'll keep your promises. Do you presume to criticize the great Oz? You ungrateful creatures think yourselves lucky that I'm giving you audience tomorrow instead of 20 years from now. Oh. The great Oz has spoken. So, thoughts on the Phantom video. Thomas? You you, you know, right away. I'm not impressed. I mean, Phantom is my boy, but I got to say, I expect more from him. I wasn't impressed with it. This was like shoddy, like almost like, I don't know, 12th grade uh, type uh, thing. I don't want to say the son of son of the, the son number two of the Phantom may have had something to do with it, but uh, he's got to step his game up a little bit. Uh, I, I thought when I first saw her, I said, well, there's a lot of Easter eggs in here. And he said, did you see the Easter eggs? And I said, yes, I did. So if you pay attention, there's, I guess there's, there's stuff to look for in there. Bradford, did you see it? Yeah, this is the Wizard of Oz one, right? Yep. Playing the role yeah. of Judy Garland yeah. is the man himself. <laughs> yeah, he's killing me with these things. I didn't see the Easter eggs. Though. I guess I got to go back and yeah, like really he's, get into it. There's stuff to look for. And you, you like conspiracy, so there's some in there. And Ed? What do you think? Well, I mean, man, I, I get called with, that I don't have a heart, man. Come on, man. Now I can kind of, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of look like I am the Tin Man lately. I'm a little, I'm not so flexible anymore. But I, I think, I think, I think uh, the fan put that in. You're the I mean, Tin yeah. Man because you were always banged up when we played. <laughs> that well, there, there, there is that. There is that. Yeah, that is <laughs> it. Was it Dennis Toto? Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's great. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, I. I tell them keep them coming. I like to use them for the uh, the uh, little uh, thumbnail for the um, episode. So uh, keep them coming. I, I'm laughing my ass off thinking about it already. So uh, Tom's laughing. He don't want to laugh. He's trying to keep a straight face, but I know he's laughing on the, on the inside. Uh, Tom, time to pay some bills. Uh, time to talk about our buddy Roger at Purchase Street Records, who's playing with Ace Fraley this weekend. Saw some videos of it. Pretty cool. Um, I told him, send us a video of you with Ace. 
he said that ain't gonna happen. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome though. Oh yeah, oh yeah, good stuff. Go ahead, Tom. All righty. This week's album of the week is brought to you by Purchase Three Records, located at fifty three Pope's Island, Unit Two, New Bedford, Mass. You can also visit them online at purchasestrecords.com or on their Facebook page. Purchase Street Records is Southern New England's largest independent record store. Boom. Hey, it's Scarpetti from 94HJY back here at Purchase Street Records, Pope's Island, New Bedford. Making my pick this week, though, all of us are in agreement that the pick has to be the All Sinners EP. Look at that. Hollywood, California. Can't beat that. And can't beat that. I got it signed by all the guys, which means one day you will find this on eBay. Right, Roger? Okay. Put my kids through school one day, right? That's all, right. All ten of them. <laughs> but come on in. This is awesome. It's a record release party today, but you can still come in, get your copy. This is fantastic. Look at that. Live at the Whiskey. Awesome local boys doing good. We love to see that in 2024. So come on by. Purchase your records. Get, get your records. There's no other place to go, but right here. So we're going to, I guess, wrap up the episode. We we made good time. We talked about a lot of different things, hit a couple of different subjects this week that we don't usually talk about. I like the movie talk. I don't know if uh, people enjoy that, too. I think uh, oh, yeah. the eclectic uh, group of movie guys that we have here could be good. Tom, you were going to say something? I was just going to say, next week, can we talk about romantic comedies? Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways, how about like, just romance movies, period? Uh, What's your favorite, Tom? One, notebook. two, three, the notebook. <laughs> oh, what'd you say? Notebook. You just... yeah. Oh, this conversation. Oh, Did this we con just become best friends? Uh, this conversation is making my that, nuts hurt. Bro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyways, Ed, we're going to do shout outs. You're going to save us on this one. What do you got? First and foremost, I'm going to give them, both of them, they're going to get more. You make me sick when you speak Oof. on that. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> rom-coms come on fellas i mean you might as well just like do jewel the nile or something jesus we, we say what you're thinking yeah uh no uh, no no you don't know what i'm thinking I don't have to it, <laughs> I don't have no, to it. Ed, what ed is thinking is you guys start with a g and end with a y <laughs> <laughs> uh, i just want to say hey thank you very much um you know um some changes are coming on, and uh, you know, like to thank my thank uh, my people at Run and Try and Gulfport, Mississippi. Appreciate, thank you very much for everything. Uh, appreciate everything. So uh, big time stuff coming down the pipeline. So should be good. And Bradford, thank you for the bottle of bourbon, sir. Greatly appreciate it, sir. I'll be uh, sampling some of that after. I'm so I'm so exhausted right now. If I had one, I would be falling asleep <laughs> into the phone. Tom, what do you got? Well, just want to give a shout out to everyone here on the podcast. I mean, look from day one to where right now, a lot of the changes and uh, bigger and better things are coming. Brad, what do you got? We'll talk, uh, shout talk out. some uh, shout out to the little man. You know, look, Luke, Lucas played, you know, eight hours of baseball today in the sun, clear blue skies. He got a little sunburnt, but my man's played his heart out. Like, and that's all you can ask for as a parent. He he absolutely balled out at first base today. He was I, I think he had one ball get by him. He uh he got on base every at bat except for once through four games. No strikeouts. Nice. Pretty incredible. Um, dude balled out, but we can't get over that hump to win first place in these damn championships. Man. Every yeah, just, time that these boys, they just they get gassed out, man. Eight hours of baseball, and uh, by the time we get to the finals, to the championship, whatever you call it, you know, um, they still get a little ring. They get a celebratory ring. Everybody gets a ring. They have first, second place. Uh, they just can't get over the hump, man. But uh, Mississippi Rays, eight U, balled out today. And also, thanks, Chris, so you can't be here. This mic is pretty legit. I'm gonna go ahead and get the whole thing set up. Uh, over the next couple of days. That way I won't have to sit here and hold it. But um, it's colored this way for International Trans Visibility Day. Uh, also, shout out to Joe Byron. So I'll uh, bring this podcast home. I want to thank every guy and every gal that's made an appearance on this podcast for the first year or so. And uh, things are getting really big. Um, we're doing big things. Uh, 
channels doing real well. Uh, we're starting to take off a little bit. Uh, starting to get good responses. We got the membership set up. Uh, we got two forms of uh, 1973 podcast swag. We got the shirts. We got other things coming. You, people have been asking about hats. I mentioned that before. We got the hats. Um, log on, check it out. Um, watch some episodes. Comment. Say some fun stuff. We'll we see everybody. If you join the membership program, we'll get you on a show. We'll get you playing video games with Chris. We'll get you chirping with us. We'll we'll get you super involved. Uh, support the channel, help us get going. Uh, you know, we probably got about 15 years till retirement and this is going to be our retirement goal. We'll be able to do this. And uh, hopefully by then we'll be uh, multi-billionaires and uh, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So I want to thank everybody for watching from these guys, from our family, to your family. We want to say happy Easter and uh, thanks everybody. And we will see you next week episode yeah. 60 next 60 later fellas later